You flash forward a little bit, I am halfway through my adventure and uh, I've now had some serious time on this motorbike. I've done a couple oil changes, clocked a few thousand kilometers, and uh, I thought I'd give a little review. So, this is the review of a 2002 Kawasaki Super Sherpa 250. Alright, first off, what is this bike? Well, it's not a KLR. It's a 250, yes, and it shares a lot of similarities with the KLR 250, but it is not exactly a KLR. This is an air-cooled 250cc dual sport, single piston, dual overhead cam motorcycle. We've got standard shocks up front, fairly basic, very normal, disc brakes in the front and back. You've got a 21 inch wheel on the front. I think this is an 18 inch on the back. It's kind of standard dual sports stuff. This motorcycle is very detuned. It makes about 20 horsepower. It's got an electric start, but it's very, very simple. Air cooled, super, super simple. When I was first looking up this bike, I couldn't really find much in the US. And actually they're kind of a little rare. I mean, they're not super rare, but if you look on the community online, they tend to be either Japanese owners or Russian owners. They're very popular in Japan and Russia. Um, in America or in Canada, I've seen a few of them and I've met some people who have owned them in the past, but they're not super common. A lot of people, when they're looking to get an adventure bike or a dual sport bike, and they look at the uh, Kawasaki bikes, they're really looking at the KLR 650. And, and I don't know much about that bike, but I do know a lot about this bike. And I'll tell you exactly why I love this bike and why if I was given the option to get a KLR 650 or this, I'd pick this every time. See, the thing is about adventure bikes, but I'll tell you, I have another fairly lightweight motorcycle that clocks in about 370 pounds. This bike right here is 265 pounds soaking wet. This is basically a mountain bike with an engine. To move this bike around down a trail, I have zero problems with it. I can give this bike to a total stranger and say, hey, yeah, you want to learn to ride a motorcycle? Perfect. Grab this, let's go. Like this kind of bike is just so easy and so forgiving, and yet it does exactly what I need it to do. It'll do highway speeds, 115 kilometers an hour is usually where I can get it up to. Um, it's got a six speed transmission, Three on the bottom tend to be more trail type of gears. Three on the top tend to be a more uh, touring gears, higher speeds. I only do four, five, and six up there. Because of the seat position, because the seat is so low, and because it has everything else that all these other dual sports have, it just, it's so easy. I just, you know, set it up to a mountain and I go, and it climbs right to the top. You know, like, originally I was just looking to get a lightweight bike because it was supposed to fit on the back of my camper van, and that's where this one will go. But now that I'm riding these lightweight bikes, I am so glad I got one because I could just throw this thing around. And you, like, I can't tell you how much fun that is to have a bike that I have zero fear of. I can learn to do wheelies, I can learn to do stoppies, endos, skid the bike around corners, throw it into really tight trails through mud, water, everything. And it just, it just does it. But yeah, if you were looking to get this bike, um, what could you do to make it a little bit better? Well, uh, the windscreen definitely helps big time. Um, and some sort of rack on the back so you can mount your bags or saddlebags or get some pannier boxes, something like that. Personally, I started with the camping bag. I don't really like it, but it was free. And I didn't have the money to buy $400 aluminum bins to go on the back. If you're looking at this bike, I think it compares well to the Honda CFR 230L. Um, it probably also compares well to the XT250. I'm not sure that it compares to a WR250R or a 250, uh, CFR250L, um, just because those bikes are significantly more expensive and they are built to a higher performance grade for sure. But um, for the price point, I mean, I've spent less than $2,000 on this bike and uh, I'm really, really happy. If you're not looking for the ultimate performer, this thing does everything I need it to do, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. So even if I don't change a damn thing about this, I love this bike.